Hello YouTube! So my name is Isabel. If you're watching from my subscription, thank you for subscribing. And if not, please subscribe. Just take a minute, hit the subscribe button. I promise you will not regret it. Today, I wanted to do something a little different. Um, I wanted to do a movie review. So I watched the movie Martian about a week ago. So the movie was really good. If you haven't seen it, if it's still in theaters now, wherever you are, just go watch it, take some friends. It was really good. I think it was better than um, Gravity. Um, and anything with Matt Damon in it, I'm, I'm down to see. You know what I mean? Really nice, like, cinematography. It was just a beautiful movie. I really liked it. And um, there was nothing too dirty in it or anything. So I give it a thumbs up. But there were a few things that the Lord was speaking to me through the movie. And so I just wanted to share that with you guys. So first off, if you don't, if you don't know the movie, I'll try to give you a little bit of a synopsis. Um, I actually came into the movie late, so I missed like the first 10 minutes. But from the trailers, you know, there's a team of astronauts and they're going to... It was Mars, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was last week that I watched it. And they, they have a mission um, from NASA and they go to Mars and they, um, they're down there and this is the part that I missed but something went wrong so that one of their um, team members got like hit um, and they thought that he was dead because it said on the machine or whatever that he had no more life. Um, but um, so they end up leaving him behind on Mars, but then later on, he turns out to be alive and he has to survive on Mars by himself. And then uh, later on, he gets, well, I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a fight for survival for this man who's on Mars. Yes. So the part I come in, he's like, he's waking up from, you know, like being shocked or electrocuted or something. The part that I missed, whatever happened to him. And um, he's like stabbed with this like piece of metal, like it's stuck in him. Like, like imagine like an arrow, like it was s like some kind of metal rod was stuck in his side. And um, he goes and he's uh, he has to literally do like s like a little bit of surgery on himself. So I know that must have been so gruesome. I don't know if I could have that much strength, but like pulling that out and also digging in there to get other like extra pieces of like metal that's stuck in his body and then stitch himself up with staples. Um, he almost passed out doing that. And um, the first word that comes out of his mouth is a cuss word. That's like the first word that, well for me when I watched it, that was the first word that he said. Um, given his present situation, he's like, man, like, FML, I'm on Mars, I almost died, this hurts, everything sucks. You know, that was, that was the reason why he was cussing, right? Um, but the Lord spoke to me and he was like, instead of him saying bleep, he should have been thanking me. Thanking me that I, he was alive in that present situation. Every time that there's an opportunity to kind of like curse at the wind, there is an opportunity to be thanking God. And this is the point that I want to make out. I'm not necessarily critiquing the movie here. I know that it's scripted and it's a story and it's realistic. But I think also, especially for Christians, we can have another reality. And that, that's to always be rejoicing, always to be thankful, whatever our situation is. Because we have a lot to be hopeful for. And if you don't know what you have to be hopeful for, then I'm going to tell you, okay? I also have a couple of hard questions for you guys. Does your response to a trial, a tribulation, or a hard time, does it please God? Does your response please God? Is your fear um, of man and situation greater than your fear of God? Um, just a few things that I was, that just kept coming to mind. Um, you know, Matt Damon, he was like, things would go good. He would get like, he would like could grow his own potatoes. Things are great. And then at some point, something would always go wrong. And that's life. Something always goes wrong. But our response can be something that we can know and have a foundation in our heart is to be still and know that he's God. He holds me in the palm of his hand. Nothing can harm me. He's already overcome the world. And in Matt David's case, like the whole universe, he is God. G-O-D like huge like let him be magnified in your mind let him become bigger than your problems what shall stand against me you know what what nothing if God is for me then there is nothing in the world that can 
yeah did that make sense also Matt Damon he had a very like uh, prideful um, a prideful attitude he's very arrogant he's like you know like I'm the best I can do this me 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 it's all self-oriented and um, he didn't have a humble uh, mindset he wasn't thankful and humble at God's provision um, and, and uh, you know even in the circumstance where he's like stranded I know that that is literally a tribulation in itself but he's still alive, you know. He there's, that's a time where he can be alone with God. That's a time where he can be discovering new things, you know. It could be a really big blessing in disguise. And in the end, it was, you know. He had his own like academy and all these things, you know. So, anyways, his his pride was all based on his own ability instead of that God was providing for him. And um, e even at some point, he he made a comment like. I'm planning to do X, Y, and Z, and oh, by the way, yeah, God, I'm counting on you. When it should be solely God that he's depending on, not himself. So when things go wrong, you know, you know that it's God is still in control versus when you're doing it by yourself and things are going well at first and then it falls apart, you have nothing to fall back on. Um, God is your foundation. He is that rock so that when waves come crashing and stuff, it will still be standing and it won't be like sinking sand. As Christians, we need to be firm in knowing that God is our strength because trial and tribulation is coming. Um, we don't have to be shaken, you know, if we're being persecuted or whatever it be, like um, having, uh, I'm trying to think of correct words, if, if there's like a death in the family or, you know, new circumstances where you're moving out of the country you know we don't have to be shaken for anything um, and persecution is coming the end of the earth like it is coming and so um, Matthew 24 also talks about how we will have trials and tribulations um, that's just one that came to mind um, that's talking about end times if you want to look that up um, but there's tons of verses in uh, the New Testament that's talking about, yeah, we will have tribulations so our, our lives isn't gonna be easy. He tells us to expect it. Um, again, I wanna articulate, I understand some of you might be saying, Isabel, you're making a big deal out of nothing. This is just a movie, it's scripted, it's based on a novel, and Matt Damon's response and attitude was really realistic. But I wanna also say, especially for us brothers and sisters in Christ, this can be our reality, being always joyful, always thankful, especially during trials. For example, the prophets and, and all other disciples and stuff like that. Like think about Daniel and the lion's den. Yo, let me look that up because that's such an amazing story. Okay, I'm back. Got my Bible. So in Daniel, I'm reading in chapter 5 and so there are some um, things are going good for Daniel, right? Life was great, and um, he was like made in charge. He was um, distinguished amongst the administrators, and he had the king plan to send him over the whole kingdom. He was he was a big guy. Daniel was a big guy, but the other administrators were a little jealous, and so they were like, "We we have to find something at fault with Daniel." So. We're going to make a decree that we're going to convince the king to make a law that anyone who worships any god besides the king um, shall be thrown into the lion's den. Yeah. And so the king was like, yeah, that sounds good. And when, um, so chapter 6, verse 10, now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened toward Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prays, prayed giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. And then of course the men found him and he got him pu uh, punished and he went into the lion's den and then check this out. How how Daniel's tri tribulation here, how he, he was literally, you know, like people were out to get him. Um, but it was such an example, he was such a light to everyone around him in the midst of this. The king himself was like, may your God, whom you continually serve, rescue you. So the result in you giving praise to God 
through all of this, giving thanks to Him, is that He'll be glorified, you know. People are going to notice that you're at peace and you're confident in God. My God sent His angel and He shut the mouths of the lion. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in His sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, Your Majesty. And the king was overjoyed and gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And um, he wrote to all the nations, he said, uh, King Darius, he said, May you prosper greatly. I issue you a decree um, that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is a living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. And all this craziness stuff, God is being glorified by the king because Daniel was not shaken, because he was not fearful, and he continued to praise and give thanks to God in the midst of, you know, whatever was happening around him. He was like, my God is still wonderful. My God is still great. He still deserves to be praised. So I'm not going to be shaken. I'm not going to worry about this stuff happening around me. I'm going to praise God because that's what I'm supposed to do. Isn't that so awesome? And, and God honored that. He protected him. Nothing hurt. He was in the most of lions and nothing hurt him. Isn't that so exciting? I love this story. Um, another example, um, also in the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel is fire. It is so good. It blows my mind. I remember when I was reading this, I was on the bus and I was literally just kind of like shaking a little bit because it's so powerful. Um, Going back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, they, they were threatened that they would be um, thrown into the fiery furnace because um, they wouldn't bow down to the king, and King Nebuchadnezzar. And they said, um, the king was furious with rage, and he was like, is it true that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold I have set up? Now when you hear this happen, you will fall down and worship the image I made. But if you don't, then you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Here they're also questioning God. And he said, they said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. I love that so much. I have to read that again. We do not need to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if He does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. They had faith in God, and they were also faithful to God. Their testimony is so powerful here, and so that's what I'm, I'm, I'm calling all of us to do. I'm, I'm not just speaking to the public I'm speaking to myself also I need to be faith filled and faithful to my God also so that when trials and tribulation come because they're coming I need to say whatever you know I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go praise my God and pray and he will rescue me and if not I'm still gonna be faithful and but he will he will he is so faithful because that's just his character he is so good another thing that um, pointed was pointed out to me during the movie was Someone made a comment, um, they said, uh, uh, one of the NASA guys would talk to the head NASA guy and he was like, do you believe in God? And he was like, yeah, you know, my family is some sort of religion or whatever, so yeah, I believe in God. And the other guy was like, good, because we need all the help we can get. And immediately, the thought that came to mind is, he is all the help we need. We don't need some like flimsy plan that might work or might not. like." We can put all our confidence in him. He's it. Like, like, I don't understand. Like, he is God. Like, what the heck else do you need? Like, they, come on. <laughs> Even if circumstances still don't look good, will you let your faith be swayed by something so temporary when he promises us eternity? He promises us eternal life. He promises us hope in heaven relationship with him so when you have this trial and it's like this little itty bitty thing we're here on earth for a short amount of time and you have the rest of forever you know will you let yourself be swayed by something so small even if it looks big magnify God so that it's 
he's bigger than that problem. James 1.12 says, Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We always have a choice. Will you choose gratefulness over bitterness? Will you choose confidence over fear? Will you choose peace over anxiety? Will you choose joy over depression? These are all like symptoms that I saw that the character Matt Damon had in the movie. He went through anxiety and depression and fear and all these things, but we have this hope that we can tap into so that through the Holy Spirit, He just gives us these freely these are the fruit of the spirit so like well, even if, when I said Lord like I can't like I can't just make something out of nothing in this situation he can um, Philippians 4 4 says rejoice in the Lord always and when I read that I'm like I'm not joyful all the time that's hard to do but rejoice in the Lord in his Holy Spirit rejoice in him always in him you always have something to be thankful for because you always have something to be joyful for because of all the promises he's made for us because of who he is because of what he saved you out of so much right also when you do this you are such a light and hope to other people around you your response whether it's positive or negative it always impacts people around you so let your peace um, and trials be a testimony and um, I want to end with Matthew 5 that says um, you are the salt and you're the light of the earth and um, don't hide that light you know um, even in, in every circumstance we always have something to be joyful and thankful for and whenever there's an opportunity to curse there's an opportunity to be thankful so thank the Lord because he's provided so many blessings for us um, and if you just if you're stuck in a pit where you you're like just in the depths of despair You can't find anything to be thankful for just cry out to the Lord. That's why he's there He wants to be there for you. He wants to have that relationship with you where you can say Lord. I'm Lord like I'm struggling like Lord. This is so hard and I promise That's that's what um Philippians 4 talks about he says um um, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and suppl supplication, let your requests be made unto the Lord. And then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will just overcome you and it will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus so that you'll be able to stay in that peace. And seriously, it's the best thing ever. I'm rambling now because I got really excited. And I'm so thankful because I, I prayed before t telling this, starting recording this video because I was like, Lord, like, you spoke to me so clearly after I had watched that video, but it's been, like, a week now, and, um, but he's, God is so faithful, he's been just bringing verses to mind, um, I hope that this has been a blessing to you, I hope it's been a little bit insightful, I hope you're not offended by me saying this and seriously I'm not bashing on the movie it's a good movie I recommend watching it these are just things that the Lord gave me some insight on while I was watching it and I thought it was very applicable to our lives so yeah if you're a bus like this please like it and please share it also if there's anyone you know that's going through a trial or um, could use a little more joyful attitude or thankful attitude or whatever um, share it with them, you know, post it on Facebook, send it to them in a message, whatever. Um, if you were blessed by this, you know, don't just partake in it, also share it with other people. Um, and like I said, please like and subscribe, come back for more because um, I am a little bad at uploading things, but I have a lot of recorded and I just got to edit it and send it out. But yeah, I hope your week is going well and I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye bye!